Hello friends and welcome to Friday Night Files and welcome to Autopsy Simulator. This is a bit of a hybrid between between a simulation and horror. Welcome into the world of a pathologist, a forensic doctor of some sorts. If you're new here, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you're not new, please at least subscribe. Oh, this is loud. Did you even hear, hear my intro? <laughs> that was very, very loud. So there's a story mode to this. So let's, let's do it. This is gonna be a horrific experience. I can tell you right now. The prologue. Office of the medical examiner, Beatsville. Dr. Jack Hampton is speaking. How can I help you? <laughs> pass on a note for me. I would like us to discuss the topic of I thought I had made it painfully obvious for the last time. No, please don't call me again and stop inquiring about my wife. Angry much? Damn journalists. <sighs> they don't let me work. God damn it. I'm not in the best frame of mind to record a lecture for my students now. I'm feeling completely broken i have a sip of that whiskey uh, where did i leave my meds this time now it's too uh now we can't hear a thing right let's up this a little bit uh, 35 is probably fine check the bathroom for your pills but we have a lot to check here first right uh read Hi, this is Kate Brooks, a reporter for the New Orleans Weekly. I couldn't find you at home. I'm starting to suspect you are avoiding me. Mr. Aman, anyway, as you know, we'd like to write an article com com commemorating your wife's achievements. We would be delighted to talk to you about it. Along with this note, I'm also leaving my business card. Let me call you this evening. I hope to find you at home or at the office. This is the one that we just talked to on the phone. What's this? They definitely pay me too little for this. Oh shit. Would you have a job Steven like this? Didn't clean up after himself again. I hope we need it for the next Hope they make a hell a lot of money, man. Okay, let's check the bathroom for our pills. If we can find the bathroom. What's this? Bathroom. Hello? Are my pills in here? so dark do we have don't we have a light or something no can't switch on the lights okay time to pull myself together and get back to work let's do it okay we have a brush <laughs> why wh why could I pick that up and look at it <laughs> I don't know uh, I need to set up the camera first. Take the camera from the storage room. Let me find the storage room. It's here. This place is starting to look like a hoarder's dream rather than a storage room. Yeah. Take that power. I don't see any need to mess with the electrics. They nope. are flaky enough as it is. There's the camera. <sighs> now remember, Jack. Don't forget to hit the record button this time. Place it on the tripod in the dissecting room. As I saw, if I think this is taking place in uh, in 1991. So we have an old, big ass camera. <laughs> Where's the dissecting room? Is it here? No. It's a laboratory. Hopefully the new tripod is going to hold up. And we have a dead body. Luckily, we have some censorship here. Uh, 
I don't want to see your wiener. Now, I just have to get everything in frame. Frame the cadaver and begin recording. This should be fine. November 20th, 1991. Time, 8.43 p.m. Recording for medical students from the University of Missouri. This autopsy is conducted by Jack Hanman. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the autopsy room. Today, you will have the dubious pleasure of following a full autopsy, step by step. Yay! For those of you who have already performed your first autopsy, this will refresh your basic knowledge. In turn, for those whose knowledge is only theoretical, I just... I advise not to watch this after a meal. <laughs> Take a look at the chalkboard. Let's start. Tell the students what is important in this profession. Always wear an apron, mask, and gloves. Goggles are Got lost it. when the job is splashy. And in case of sharp accidents, it's worth having disinfectants at hand. It's true that you won't get ptomaine poisoning straight away, but if your liver or kidney aren't doing well, you may end up with diarrhea. Yay. What an awesome job. The cadaver is placed on its back on the autopsy table. The pathologist stands on the right of the deceased. Make sure that all the necessary tools are always at hand so that you don't have to run around looking for something like I do all the time. Who dreams of getting a job like this? Huh? Are you any of you guys hoping to be an autopsist, pathologist? I would never ever even think about in the getting a job like this securing forensic evidence it is difficult not to interfere with the original condition of the deceased written and photographic documentation plays a vital role throughout the entire examination process you gotta be a little sick in your head right enjoying doing stuff like this during your research be patient inquisitive but above all attentive to detail many entries are visible at first glance but sometimes they can be cover for more interesting stories. And lastly, remember that nothing teaches you self-narration like working with the dead. So mm -hmm. get used to that fact soon. Everyone will think you're talking to yourself. All right, then. Now, on to the police folder. That will contain all sorts of pertinent information as to who the deceased might be and what potentially happened to them. So, let's take a closer look, shall we? Yep. Where is it? I think we are dissecting organs over here. Awesome stuff. Where's the police folder? I hear this. Police evidence file. The deceased's name is Tobias Chambers, locally known as Old Toby. Homeless and unemployed for at least a couple of years. The deceased was found on the outskirts of a parking lot at a gas station, where he often begged and persistently offered drivers to wash their car windows. The body was noticed by a station employee during the morning shift. Initially, he thought that someone had thrown some boots and a coat in a nearby ditch. It took him a moment to recognize the pile of clothes as the body of a man. He worked most of his life at the local port dealing with unloaded cargo. He was fired for being drunk and starting fights. His son runs a hardware store on his own. His wife left him years ago. They both had no contact with the deceased. Signs of libation were found around the body. Empty bottles, traces of an inept attempt to start a fire, <laughs> and a scattered makeshift blanket. Alrighty. Put down the police folder. That's it. That didn't tell me much. It's worth remembering the context around the scene of a death. This allows you to better interpret any traces found on the body. I shouldn't start the procedure without gloves. Nope. They're over here. Now it's our turn to take some pictures for our files. If I can just remember where I left the camera. Um, it's in here somewhere. Desk ah. drawer. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> I knew it was here somewhere. An old Polaroid. As I mentioned at the beginning, before we begin the internal examination, we need to document the cadaver in the condition it arrived in. We begin with a full body photo. Try and stick to the top down rule, but this is not always possible. Let's keep in mind it's all about the legibility, not the perfect frame. Take a general photo of the deceased. 
quick camera. A general photo, that's all of the body, right? Voila, now we move on to the next step. Looking for traces. Take your time. Look at the corpse from different sides, from different angles, up close, and from a distance. You're looking for anything out of the ordinary. Alrighty. Find marks on the body to photograph. We have some marking here. Take photo. Why can't I take a photo? I'm not sure. Uh, do we zoom in, maybe? The boiler yield wound. Yep. Looks old. I'll take a closer look later. Okay. The, these are not markings. Nice feet. Some wounds in the feet and signs of frostbite. Probably because the subject's shoes were too small. Also, he might have been a homeless guy. Hardened hands, worn out by physical work and frostbite. Or frostbite because he has been staying too long out outside in the cold. That's something interesting. It will be necessary Block to check whether this injury was severe enough to cause damage to the brain. Blunt force damage, maybe. In a moment, we will check which of our initial observations will be worthy of further consideration. But before we get to that, I need to write down some basic data. Pin photos to the photo board. Head, feet, stomach, maybe an old wound. General photo and the hand. Perform the autopsy. Here we go. I don't know how to do an autopsy. Aren't you going to tell me how to do it? Scalpel, scissors, syringe, magnifying glass, knife. Hmm. I guess I forgot to clean the knife. Well, who cares? Personal information. Uh, the deceased was unclothed. Eight. Okay, as you can see, I note everything down on previously prepared forms. Every pathologist must keep a detailed record of every step of the autopsy. This not only allows you to track the procedure, but also collates the results together, upon which you may back up your conclusions. So, enough of the boring prep. Let's begin by taking a closer look at the spots I photographed earlier. For this, you're going to need a magnifying glass. Inspect the areas of concern with the magnifying glass. We press tab to get the tools. Magnifier. Which spot first? Start from top. I top can and go the down. Presence of ecchymosis on the deceased man's head. The appearance indicates the intravital nature of the wound. Add alcohol, which I can clearly smell. And this was an accident just waiting to happen. Mm hmm. Uh, this old wound it looks like a burn mark. No doubt painful, but it's not pertinent for this case. All right. Now the hand. Okay, maybe we have to walk onto the other side of the body. No. Okay. <laughs> Here we can see frostbite on the fingertips. We can tell by the characteristic skin color. And now the feet. Are those also frostbite? Definitely a painful mix of frostbite, abrasions, and blisters. Old Toby had been wearing shoes too small for him for a very long time. That's if he wore any at all. Uh, if they were too small, then of course he... He wore shoes. If he wore no shoes at all, he would say they were too big shoes, right? So far, <laughs> there are a lot of superficial wounds, but only one serious injury to the head. Let's go back to our notes. Highlight the previously found wounds on the clipboard. Mannequin, four spots. Okay. 
Where did we put the clipboard then? These are the files, yeah? Highlight the previously found wounds on the clipboard. How do I get the clipboard? Ah, shift. First, I mark the location of the entries and make notes for each one. So... One on the head. Wound. Definitely an important clue. This is something we'll investigate first. Even though this type of wound didn't contribute to the deceased's death, we're still required to record it. We're not in frost season yet, but high humidity, wind, and the inability to warm up can also be causes of frostbite. Really? If Toby's body was cold for a prolonged period, the frostbite could have resulted from the body's defense reaction. The safety of the internal organs is more important than fingers, nose, or ears. As you can see, we don't have much to go on. Let's nope. write down what preliminary causes of death we can think of. I think this one had a head Various wound. types of accidents are a common cause of death among the homeless and the elderly. Perhaps old Toby slipped and accidentally hit his head. This is of no interest to us. Considering the conditions in which he slept, his body may have become hypothermic. The nights have been particularly nasty lately. We will check if there are any signs of freezing internally. Since the deceased clearly smelled of alcohol, I'll add alcohol poisoning to our list. <laughs> yeah. Put down the clipboard and continue the autopsy. We still have one thing left from the basics. Rigor mortis. Perform the rigor mortis examination. Well, how does one do that? Well, we take our deceased by the hand. Gradually we raise it. No? Uh... Oh, maybe only... Ah, like so. Slowly. Nice and slow. Apparently. Now let it go. As you can see, the hand falls loose. What's the conclusion? He's dead. Death must have occurred more than 72 hours ago. The police information appears correct. Okay. Dead trauma seems the most promising, so we'll start there. But this... I need an oscillating saw. Yay, here we go. Select the skull saw and open the cranium. Don't mind if I do. Okay, it's not in our tools. Scalpel, scissors, syringe. Where's our scalpel saw? Glass, knife. Mm. I guess I forgot to clean the knife. Where's the saw? Did I have a saw in uh, the tools here? Ah, oh, yeah, sorry. The cut is made from ear to ear. Uh, nice. After which, we remove the skin and Holy. the skull. Moses, begin a thorough brain analysis by examining the organ. After the basic examination, we can see that the brain's cerebral gyri in both hemispheres are symmetric. The brain looks good. Let's take a cross section. Uh huh. Some pathologists prefer to examine organs without removing them. However, for me, it's much more convenient to examine them on a board, which we'll do now. Yay. Dissect the brain at the cutting board. Okay. Holding a long, narrow blade knife in the dominant hand, we slowly cut the cranial nerves on both sides, all the time pulling the brain towards us. Uh, we'll start from the bottom, or...? Uh, 
How does one do this? Ah, okay. Let me just move it down ever so slightly and slowly. So far, so good. Uh, the hematoma mm -hmm. seems to have had no effect on the brain. I have no clue what he's talking about, but okay. Turn to the autopsy. Ugh, my head. Oh, I can't think straight. Pills. We have a hangover. Where are my pills? Don't have time to take pills. I can't. I cannot. I need pills. Okay, let's find your pills. <laughs> hey, do we have some in here? No, oh, so I wash. Let's go to the toilet and find our pills. What's wrong with this guy? Alrighty. Let's continue. With our awesome job. Rule the fatal accident out as well. Exclude fall as potential cause of death. Brain is in good condition, so we have no choice but to proceed to the internal examination of the other organs. Yay. I grab a scalpel from my kit. Scalpel. The incision should be in the shape of a letter Y. Here we go. Use a deep cut to reach all the way to the ribs and to penetrate the abdominal wall. Uh, imagine doing this. You know. I would puke all over the body. All right, now we peel back and separate the skin. How do we, uh... Ah, okay. Ugh. Ugh. And we done it now? Okay. Now, we need to remove the ribs. We'll need the loppers for this. Uh-huh. Loppers. Mm. Quite a satisfying crunch. What? What a satisfying the crunch. Tissue, we instantly notice two things. Firstly, there is no congestion of the internal organs. This means that although the deceased was hypothermic, it didn't kill him. Secondly, these the are the lungs, yeah? Smoked like a chimney. So, we should take a closer look at those lungs. We can see widespread black and tarry deposits caused by smoking cigarettes. Despite the tragic condition of the lungs, they are not the cause of death. Alice smoked too. It didn't kill her, but... <clears throat> her? Isn't that he? What was I talking about? Ah, Lungs. he's getting confused. Y yes. Advanced inflammation. What's wrong with us? Mark the damage to the lung, the clipboard. Alrighty. Uh, what now? Select the syringe. syringe. Now Obtain three samples, to samples for toxicology. Syringe. Three. In, in the, the eye? eye? The heart and the bladder. I'm really? I'm interested to see the concentration of alcohol in the body. You put a syringe in his eye? Vitreous humor analysis is very useful in indicating long-term alcohol abuse. Uh. Why does anyone get a job like this? What's wrong with you? Left on the bladder, we draw about 10 milliliters of fluid. Nice. Five milliliters from the left ventricle should do it. Now we take our samples to the centrifuge. But before I do that, I need to find my notebook. My dyscalculia means that I always double check the settings. Retrieve the notebook from the office. 
with the necessary values to run <laughs> centrifuge. Alrighty. Is it this one? Thing is covered in stains. I should check this out under the microscope sometime. Now let's use the centrifuge. Let's get back to the examination. We put all of the samples into the rotor. Place the samples into the centrifuge rotor. One, two, and three. Now we set the appropriate time and speed. Set the correct values on both dials and start mixing. Okay, let's read the notes. <coughs> Presence of alcohol in the blood. Time 15 minutes. Speed 70%. 15 minutes, right? Yeah. Right there. 17%. Okay, let's roll. Star Centrifuge. Oh shit. The fuses again. Oh damn it. God damn it. My old but trusted centrifuge. Ideal for all the fluid tests I need to perform during an autopsy. Can someone fix the lights, please? W where were we? Oh, yes. The blood alcohol concentration. Let's see what we've got here. Why are we so confused? Everything's separated as it should. Our lab is closed until tomorrow after the last... Uh, incident. However, considering that Toby's favorite eau de parfum appears to be ethanol, <laughs> I'm guessing the results won't surprise me at all. Let's go further. We Yay. will now focus on the cardiovascular system, specifically the heart. We remove the organ and examine it closely. Let's remove the heart. We look for dark hypoxic areas, clots, or other elements that stand out as abnormal. At first glance, the heart looks fine. The pulmonary trunk and aorta seem to be in good condition. There are no pathological changes that would have contributed to Toby's death. Okay. Now, let's take a closer look at the stomach. Size is normal. Healthy. Pink color. Mm -hmm. And as expected, the stomach has no major external damage. We will so how did this guy die? And inspect inside. We will do it carefully so that its contents do not spill out. Yep. We open the Let's not spill his beans. From the heart to the pyloric end. Oh, I already feel like there's something left inside. Fuck. Do I really have to go? <laughs> oh, we are cutting. Yeah, okay. But we had to start at <laughs> that other end. Oh, we are cutting through the stomach. Let's see what kind of beans you've been eating. Okay, large amount of gas, small amounts of yellow, grayish food content, resembling some kind of meat. No beans. Either our deceased hadn't eaten in days, or the bulk of his stomach <clears throat> had already found a way out. Looks like I'll have to find the missing contents. Find the missing content? Ah, in his shit bladder, or <laughs> pollen, or whatever it's called. <laughs> There are two ways here. One is obvious, <clears throat> and the other is... It couldn't have been suffocation, could it? I'll add this to the list and move on to the deceased's neck. At first glance, the trachea looks normal. Same result as with the stomach. The external inspection doesn't tell us anything. This time, we'll cut on a tray. Yay. Let's cut some more organs. While cutting such a small organ as the trachea, we must make a precise incision. We will be very, very precise. We'll be able to cut with the very tip of the blade. 
we must hold the scalpel as we would a pen. Here we and go. And after careful examination and deduction, we've got it. A clogged trachea. It's time to summarize the whole thing. Turn to the autopsy. Based on the report and preliminary documentation, it's safe to assume that the deceased passed out after consumption of alcohol and then fell asleep on his back. Uh huh. Then the gastric contents refluxed and flooded the airways, causing death. Hmm. No, the cause of death. Where? Alcohol, yeah. Asphyxiation. Oh, you can also cross this over. That's Asphyxiation. Forget about the recovery position at dorm parties. Decide the appropriate manner of death. Manner of death. Must be an accident, right? And now it's all clear. Yeah. The death was suffocation. Now, signature. Sign here. The mystery is ah. solved. But for us, this is not the end. First, the dead body needs to be cleaned up. For this, we will need to close the body and grab the needle. First, we unroll the skin flaps. You don't put the organs back? No. And then, we sew the deceased back up. Stitch him up. The needle. I'm using the baseball stitch technique. This stitching method is very strong and quick to do. Okay. All stitched up. Beautiful. Leave the body. Now we say goodbye to the deceased and put them safely in the fridge, ready for the next stage of their journey. Alrighty. Place the body into the fridge and close it. God, I'm tired. I'll drop these Head to your car in the parking lot. Let's get a drink. I'll call Stephen. I don't feel like drinking alone today. Stephen! What? This is not the parking lot. Hello? Oh, you've been dead for uh, quite some time. Oh, blunt force trauma. What's going on here? Are we dreaming? Okay. It's quite a bad dream. I did then. That was the prologue. Now we're on to chapter Forgive one. <clears throat> but to be able to see chapter one, I urge you to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss chapter one. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, bye bye.